here's ring mod side chaining explained. I'll try and be as quick as possible with this. And um, this is actually my third time uploading a video on this subject. I've deleted the other two. That's because they weren't done well enough. So what I have here is a sidechain bus and I'm routing everything except the except for the kick and snare to the sidechain bus. And there's a clipper on here. And this is what that sounds like. So important to note is that my sidechain bus is not crossing 0 dB and it's not hitting the master limiter at all. And next up here is my kick and snare. They're also being clipped to 0 dB. So now I would play these two together and here, here's what they sound like without any side chaining. As you can see, there's more than 5 dB of overs when the drums and the sidechain bus collide. So here is how I do sidechain, ring mod sidechaining. Let me actually show you an audio example of that first. Here's what it looks and sounds like. We're not crossing 0 dB at all on the master, even when there's nothing else. Nothing, there's no clipper on the master, and this, this limiter is happening after this oscilloscope. And uh, what is happening here is essentially sidechain compression, but with zero attack and zero release. I have these audio clips here that I bounced out earlier. They're only about the sub. So if I solo the sub here, hold on. Yeah, okay. So when the sub is being ring mod side chained, this is what it looks like. Right. And this is the original wave. What's happening is my kick and snare, which are routed to a kick and snare bus. Uh, well, the kick and snare bus is being sent to an effect send that has a wave shaper on it, which is rectifying the drums negatively. So the rectified drums are identical except for the fact that the, all the positive half cycles are flipped to be negative. And this is not being sent to the master, it's muted. I'm only using this as a sidechain source for the ring modulator. So my sidechain bus is being sent to another, bu another bus that has M ring mod on it, which is right here. And I'm just enabling sidechain and using the rectified drums as a sidechain source. When you do that and when you ring mod the sub with the rectified drums, you get this. Whoops. And when you combine this signal, which is already inverted from the original sub, you get this. So the ring mod bus is producing all of this and that's being sent to the master because it has to combine with the sidechain bus because it will phase cancel with the sidechain bus which is creating the perfect sidechain docking curve. So this is the final waveform. As you can see from here, I have the rectified drums 
and you can think of this as the volume curve that we're imparting on our sub or sidechain bus. Let me hide those two tracks. So there's the original sidechain target and this is our sidechain source and this is the end result. If we look closely you can see that whenever our drum is doing a half cycle whether it's positive or negative our uh, rectifier makes sure that all of them are negative now then what we're getting is a volume curve on the sub that matches our drum exactly so look at here that's our original wave that's our rectified drum and that's our sub you can see that play out even clearer with the kick which has larger sine waves so the rectified kick the sub and after it's being ring modded so you can see the volume of the sub is exactly the opposite of our kick drum whenever our kick drum is at a zero crossing our sub gets to full volume and our, when our kick is at full volume whether it's a negative a half cycle or a positive one that's when our sub is talking as you can see that's an that's like a negative um, volume shape right there so that is what's happening and uh, yeah I think I explained the routing fully here so I'll just play the audio examples one more time Yeah, so the volume ducking curve imparted on our sidechain bus through ring mod sidechaining is so quick and so perfect that even on our master we're not crossing 0 dB. If I compare that to normal sidechain compression, you can see that on the transients it does a good job like on here, on the transit, we're not crossing 0 dB. But on the tail, which is the release curve, which I can show you, right there. This is clashing with our um, drums, right? So, yeah. When this part clashes with our drums, it goes above 0 dB. But instead, the ring mod sidechain curve is perfectly fitted to the drum waveform so that it doesn't cross 0 dB. So again, um, with compression, and with ring mod side chaining if you're worried about the distortion it kind of sounds distorted because the volume curve is so fast then I can tell you that when the kick and snare is playing you can't hear this distortion it's being masked masked fully by the drums so yeah if you still want want to have the docking from sidechain compression and save on headroom on the master then you can just combine ring mod sidechaining with sidechain compression
So yeah, that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, ask me in the comments. And see you next time.